the overview for accounting distributions and subledger accounting. Today we're going to explore two new pieces of functionality that were introduced in Microsoft Dynamics AX 2012. The goal of these two features were number one, to allow the user to view the accounting of a document prior to journalizing, and number two, to allow the user to make edits to that accounting entry prior to journalizing in order to minimize month-end adjustments. We'll take a look at this functionality by going through a purchasing cycle, and we be we'll begin the cycle by creating a purchase order for three office chairs that I need to purchase for my company. So as we enter in the document, this will sit follow the same pattern that we had before of opening or creating a purchase order. As we put the data into the system, you can see that various amounts are calculated on the document that need to be accounted for. And I'll even go and add a miscellaneous charge because I know that my vendor will charge me for some freight when they ship these office chairs. So at this point we have two different amounts that need to be accounted for eventually when the vendor invoice is received. First we're going to take a look at accounting distributions. Accounting distributions are located under Financials Distribute Amount and this form is used to define how an amount will be accounted for. As you can see though, this form does not show you the actual accounting. In this scenario, the purchase order is really not accounted for. That happens at the time of recording the vendor invoice. But what we can choose to do is based on the persona, define how that expense will be accounted for at the time of invoicing. If the purchasing agent is aware of how to account for this expense, they can come into this form and define the accounting distributions which will then be defaulted onto the vendor invoice. If we look at the two sections available in this window, first we have a tree control on the left side of the form which shows us visually, visually the amounts that are defined on the document. You can see as I select the extended price that it shows the expense account that defaulted from the item posting profile for that item. If I change it to the charge amount, you can see that the ledger account changed. On the right side of the form is where you define the accounting or how the amount will be accounted for when the vendor invoice is received. So we can see in this scenario the main account did default for us from the item posting profile but the financial dimensions did not default and that was because we didn't have them defined on the vendor. We'll go ahead and enter in the appropriate dimension values to define how the accounting will be recorded and we'll say that that ledger account will receive 60% of the expense. We can see some various controls at the top of the grid also. I can further choose to split the accounting distribution. In this scenario, I'll choose to change my third segment for my expense purpose to a dimension different than training in order to reflect the fact that a portion of this expense will be split across departments. We can see here also I could choose to delete a distribution. If I want to reset it to return back to the defaults, I could choose that. If I choose distribute equally, you can see it equally divides the amount that needs to be accounted for. Let's assume that I'm the purchasing agent and I don't know how the distribution should be accounted for, so I'll choose the reset button in order to get back to the defaults. If I go ahead and close this, we're going to confirm the purchase order and now we're going to record the vendor invoice. When I receive the vendor invoice, I'll go ahead and document the vendor invoice number. And then along with that, I'll also update the unit price because the vendor did charge us only $160 per unit rather than the $175. If we open up the accounting distributions, again located under Financials, Distribute Amounts, we see the same basic form that was available to us on the purchase order. The only difference in this scenario is that we did break out the extended price and the purchase price variance. This is to ensure that we can account for these amounts differently if required, and also to make sure that we can see visually that there was a difference in the price that was quoted to us from the vendor. So at this point, I can go ahead and fill in the financial dimensions, just as we had seen on the purchase order, in order to account for the expense and we'll put 60% to this ledger account and split it further into a different purpose for the remaining 40%. I also want to point out that as you enter the information on the extended price, the dimension values that were defined 
also roll down to any child amount, such as the price variance. So you can see the same financial dimensions automatically were populated, and the same is true also for the miscellaneous charge. If you do want to make an accounting change to, let's say, the, the miscellaneous charge, you could go directly to that amount's distribution and go ahead and make the change. We'll go ahead and close out of here and we're ready to post the document at this point. But before we do, we did also add the additional functionality to preview the accounting. So before I choose Post, I'm going to go to the Financials tab and choose a Subledger Journal button. The Subledger Journal is the preview of the accounting entry that will be created upon posting the document. So we can see here that I have multiple expenses. I also have the freight that's being entered into the system and it's split to match the ledger accounts that were defined in the accounting distributions. Further, we can see that the vendor balance is also split across. And this is because I have a, both a debit and a credit. If we go ahead and close this out, we're ready to post the document. Now that I have my accounting recorded, we'll go ahead and take a look at some general ledger parameters which will impact the functionality that you've just seen. Under general ledger parameters, the first option that I want to take a look at is located under ledger in your table of contents. And the option is called values used for summary account. When we create the subledger account entries for the vendor balance and for the customer balance, you do need to tell the system whether you would like the financial dimension values to default from the accounting distributions or from the source document header. What this allows you to do is to maintain the functionality available in AX2009 where the financial dimensions for the accounts payable and accounts receivable accounts defaulted from the header of your document. Next, I want to take a look at batch transfer rules. With the addition of the subledger accounting being maintained in the subledger, you now have the capability to define whether you would like to post in detail or summary to general ledger. So we can see here that I actually have a rule defined specifically for vendor invoices, where number one, it will post to general ledger in a scheduled batch and number two that I'm going to choose to summarize the accounting entries rather than posting them in detail when I post to general ledger. This allows me to really minimize the amount of data that is being created over in general ledger. The functionality that we have seen today is uptaken into the procure to pay process which includes the purchase requisition, the purchase order, the product receipt, and the vendor invoice. It also was implemented into the free text invoice, the travel requisition, and the expense report. That's the overview today for the accounting distribution and subledger journal entries.